In this video, we're going to turn the default cube into a UFO in under a minute. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and now that we've been starting to learn Blender and we've been learning a few of the tools, we're going to do a quick exercise and in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use our shortcut keys that we haven't learned yet. Now, the reason I want to say this is because there are going to be a handful of shortcut keys that you're going to use all the time. And now that we've gotten the basics down for how to find tools in the menus, it's a good time for us to practice learning how to use these shortcut keys. So we're going to do an exercise and we're going to take this cube and we're going to turn it into the traditional UFO sort of dish shape. Now we're going to take this cube and we're going to do a handful of things. So I'm going to explain everything that we're going to do first and then we'll rush through them. So the first tool that you're going to need to learn is going to be the loop cut and slide. So I'm going to hit tab on the keyboard and tab on the keyboard will take us into edit mode. And you can do this again with tab on the keyboard or you can come up here and go to object mode. But tab is going to be the quick way for you to get back and forth between object and edit mode. So that's the first shortcut key that you definitely want to learn because it saves you the time from having to go up here and figure out the drop down and get into edit mode because you're going to be doing that a lot, going back and forth. You can figure out a shortcut key for figuring out the edge selections, but honestly this one I'm not going to worry about at this point in time. Let's just go ahead and pick which one we want. In this case it's going to be edge mode. The next thing that we're going to be doing is going to edge and we're going to insert a loop cut and slide and you can see here that's control and R. Now if we were just to hit R on the keyboard that's going to be rotate but control and R is actually going to allow us to do this loop cut. Now the trick with this one is we want to use the mouse wheel before we actually click to select because that's going to allow us to increase the number of edges we're adding. So you can see here we can add or reduce those numbers. And as soon as we click, it's going to allow us to slide them up or down as well. So pretty handy. And again, right mouse button will allow it to put it right in the middle. So again, that's another tool that we're going to have to be able to use is that loop cut and slide. The next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be using shortcut keys for move and scale instead of using these tools on the left hand side. So with these edges selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. Now S will allow me to scale them. One of the cool tricks that you can do with this is you can actually press X, Y, or Z to scale in a single direction. So if I hit Z on the keyboard, it lets me scale them up or down in the Z direction to put them closer to each other. Next, we're going to hit G on the keyboard, and then I'm going to hit Z as well. So this is going to allow me to translate, and then if I pick a coordinate, it's going to allow me to translate just in a single direction. Next, I'm going to left click to deselect those. Then I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to click an edge. Then I'm going to hold down Shift while still holding down Alt and I'm going to select these other loops. Now that I have these selected, once again, I'm going to hit S on the keyboard to scale and you can see that we're scaling in and out. Now, one of the cool things with this tool is if we want to scale only in X and Y. So instead of hitting Z to scale only in Z, we can hit the Shift key and Z, which will exclude Z from being scaled. So you can see now we're only going to be scaling in X and Y. We can see the red and the green axes on the screen that are being displayed. So as we bring that out, you can see that we're scaling it. This is going to be the basic shape that's going to turn into a UFO. Then we're going to go to our modifier. We're going to add a subdivision surface. In this case, I'm going to turn this up to probably four in my viewport. Then I'm going to left click. From here, I want to hold down the Alt key and I want to select the loop that goes around. It's hard to see, so we can go into our wireframe display or we can turn on X-ray. That will allow us to see into the model. Then I want to bring this out a little bit and I want to bring this out and crease it. So I'm going to use N on the keyboard or we're going to go to View and Sidebar. Then I'm going to change the crease weight to 0.5. Then I'm going to use S and I'm going to do Shift Z to sort of bring this out a bit. Then I want to bring this top face down. I'm going to change to face selection. And I'm going to use G on the keyboard and Z and bring this down. Then I'm going to turn off X-ray. 
I'm going to right click on this, go to Smooth Shade, which will help us get rid of the visual facets. And you can see here that we've made this sort of UFO shape. Now, there's more that we could do with this, obviously, but this is just a quick example of how just a handful of tools and a handful of shortcut keys can help us turn this into some other shape besides that default cube. So now that we have the basics down, let's go ahead and go to File, New General. I'm not going to save this. And I'm going to perform the same operations on this cube, but this time we're going to speed through it a bit now that we know exactly what we're doing. And again, we're going to be able to do this in a minute or less. It's going to be pretty quick, pretty easy. We've been through the process entirely before. So just a really quick reminder, we're going to use tab to go into edit mode. We'll use control and R to do loop cut and slide. We're going to do S to scale and Z in the Z direction to pull those edges closer together. We're going to select the edges by holding down Alt to select the loop, Alt and then Shift to select or add more to our selections. Then we're going to scale them out in X and Y by doing S to scale, and then we're going to do Shift and Z to exclude that from our scaling direction. And that's going to be the basis for everything else, and then we can fine tune as needed. So right now it says that I'm just over six minutes on recording, so I'm going to get started and see if we can do this in a minute. So once again, I'll say what I'm doing as we're going, and I'll put the shortcut keys on the screen, but we're going to go through it at sort of a normal pace. So tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to go into my edges. Control and R for a loop cut. I'm going to scroll the wheel until we have four. Pull them down a little bit. S and Z to scale those in the Z direction. Then G and Z to move them wherever I want. Left click to deselect. Alt and click this edge. Hold down shift to click the other two. S and shift Z to exclude Z from our scale. I'm gonna take this top face and I'm gonna scale that in a little bit. I'm gonna hold down the edge selection, Alt, select this edge, N to open up my menu, half bevel weight, go to my modifiers, add a subdivision surface. We'll increase this up to four, tab to get out of edit mode, right click, shade smooth, and now we have our UFO shape. Once again, we could go through and add all kinds of different details. We can bevel edges, we can change the top and bottom. But within a minute, using just some basic tools, we're able to turn that default cube into something that looks unrecognizable from it. So this is a great exercise to play around with that default cube, just with some simple tools to figure out ways in which we can challenge ourselves. And through this repetition, we'll be able to apply those shortcut keys over and over again. Once again, we only did a handful of things. Insert, loop, cut, and slide. We used scale. We used the scale option to scale in Z direction by hitting Z on the keyboard. We did scale, shift Z to exclude Z, only scaling in X and Y. G on the keyboard is translate. And again, we can do in a single direction or we can exclude a direction to move in plane. Then we also added a subdivision surface, we shaded smooth, and we also changed the crease or the edge weight on that bottom edge. So be interested to see what you could do with your designs. Just go ahead and play around, trying to make some simple shapes, and see if you can create something very unique just from that default cube. If you have any questions, please let me know, but I thought it was a good time for us just to do a quick exercise to play around with what we've learned and begin to start to develop the muscle memory for those shortcut keys.